हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आई विल बी टीचिंग यू द लास्ट एसे ऑफ यूनिट फोर्थ वर्जीनिया वुल्फ्स जूडिथ शेक्सपियर वर्जीनिया वुल्फ्स फुल नेम वाज एडलिन वर्जीनिया वुल्फ शी वाज द डॉटर ऑफ लेस्ली स्टीफन हु हिमसेल्फ वाज अ वेरी वेल नोन मैन ऑफ लेटर्स अ बायोग्राफर अ फिलोसोफर अ राइटर एंड हर मदर Two was very popular. Her name was Julia Princip Jackson. She was the one who has celebrated the pre-Raphaelite artist. So she herself was an artist. In short, we can say that Virginia Woolf inherited a very um, literary and cult, very high literary and cultural background. So this particular essay, Judith Shakespeare. I'll be reading the text for you, but before that, I would like to tell you the little background of the essay. It is uh, an extract from Virginia Woolf's most popular uh, essay, "A Room of One's Own." "A Room of One's Own" is known as uh, one of the uh, feminist classic. Uh, fe fe it talks about the feminist theory. Uh, Later on, it was deemed as uh, a classic of feminist theory. But when Virginia Woolf wrote, she sim simply has shown her anguish over not allow, uh, not giving uh, girl children the right to go to the school and have the complete formal education. And here in this essay, you see, uh, Virginia Woolf has created a. Uh, an imaginary character, Judith Shakespeare. She is the uh, sister of Shakespeare, and how she, if she had, if Shakespeare had a uh, sister, uh, how she would have felt, and how she felt. And you see, Virginia herself was taught at home along with other sisters of hers. Uh, her brothers were allowed to go to school. and college in spite of the fact that both her parents were highly educated so let's begin the text the text goes like this let me imagine since facts are so hard to come by what would have happened had shakespeare had a wonderfully gifted sister so in the very first fourth sentence uh, virginia says had shakespeare had a sister means shakespeare didn't have a sister but if she had or the poet uh, writer is imagining that if he had a sister she would have been treated not like shakespeare was treated shakespeare was a wanton boy which she is going to tell you in the second a section of this essay so she says shakespeare himself went very probably his mother was an heiress to the grammar school where he may have learnt latin ovid virgil and horace and the elements of grammar and logic means shakespeare's mother was well educated in the same fashion as virginia woolf's mother was also well educated but uh, Shakespeare was allowed to go to the grammar school, which was established by her mother, but not her sister. Fine, and there he was forced to learn Horace, Ovid, and Virgil. The text again goes: He was, it is well known, a wild boy who poached rabbits, perhaps shot a deer, and had rather sooner than he would he should have done. to marry a woman in the neighborhood that uh, even before he could uh, uh, shakespeare had attained adulthood he married a woman elder to him in the neighborhood and not only that he made her he fathered that lady and he was blessed in the sense he was blessed uh, with a child when he himself was not quite grown up and was not able to carry on the responsibilities of a father but he fathered that lady quicker than was right quicker than was right quicker than it was the right or ripe age to father to be a father that escapade sent him to seek his fortune in london and because he was fathered because he became a parent he went to london without completing his formal education 
He had, it seemed, a taste for the theatre. He began by holding horses at the stage door. Very soon he got work in the theatre, became a successful actor and lived at the hub of the universe, meeting everybody, knowing everybody, practicing his art on the boards, exercising his wits in the streets and even getting access to the palace of the queen. And you see how Shakespeare struggled. He went away from his home. And he started his career as an actor, but before that he was struggling and he was just carrying horses, ferrying people from uh, roadside to the theatre. And gradually he learnt and he developed the art of acting, he started acting and through his knack uh, he could meet the most powerful person in the London street, the queen herself. Again the text goes, Meanwhile, his extraordinarily gifted sister, let us suppose, remained at home. His sister was not given the opportunity to go away. She cannot go. Uh, she was as adventurous, as imaginative, as agog to see the world as he was. Virginia says that she too was means Judith Shakespeare, the imaginary sister of Shakespeare, was also very imaginative. She too had imaginative power to write plays, to act in plays, but she was not allowed to. She was not allowed to take up adventures. She was not sent to school. What to talk of going outside uh, the town? She was not allowed even to go to the school. She could not have the formal education. She had no chance of learning grammar and logic. I'm sure she was denied her right to learn uh, basic grammars or to learn logic and rhetoric, which uh, the Shakespeare was forced, which Shakespeare was coaxed and convinced to learn and he left it in between. She picked up a book now and then. One of her brothers perhaps read a few pages and what she used to do at home? She was not having even her own books so she used to get pick up some books which his, her brother was reading and those were left here and there and she was reading tits and bits from, from some pages of the books of her own but then her parents came in and told her to mend their stockings or mind to stew and not moon about with books and papers and when she was trying to read her parents came in between and told her that you are not supposed to study rather you should mend stockings you should weave stockings you should stitch stockings or means you should indulge in stitching etc or you should prepare some dish instead of reading papers means for girls it is stitching and cooking which is a preferable task to do they would have uh, again uh, going back to the text they would have spoken sharply but kindly for they were substantial people who knew the condition of life for a woman and loved their daughter and that was done by the parents who were kind enough they were sharp they were strict but polite uh, because they understood in the heart of their heart that their daughter is a talented one and she wants to study so she should be allowed to study but the societal pressure was so heavy on them or the cultural pressure was so heavy on them that they were not ready to uh, take a, a step in which they can allow their daughter to study like a male child was studying or like they had allowed their male child to study. Uh, more likely ma then uh, not she was the apple of her father's eye and she was the very dear child of her father apple of her father she was a blue eyed child her father used to love very dearly but in spite of that he was not giving her permission allowing her to study properly perhaps she scribbled some pages in an apple loafed on the sly but was careful to hide them or set fire to them and see the poor child she was so much into studying that she used to write on an apple loaf secretly without letting her parents to know that she is writing 
what she used to write here and there and what uh she used to do later on she used to either burn it or throw it so that her parents are not able to see her because she was an obedient child and she didn't want to disturb her parents soon however before she was out for her teens she was to be betrothed to the son of a neighboring wool stapler and even before she was mature enough, even when she had not completed even her 19, she was forced to get married to a neighborhood boy. She cried out that marriage was hateful to her and that uh, she was severely beaten by her father. And when she said she is not ready for marriage, she uh, she is not interested in uh, marriage. She wants to study. Her father became very cruel to her and he had even used violence, beaten her, dragged her. Then he used to scold her and then he, he realized that he is doing something wrong. He stopped that. He stopped beating her child and tried to coax her. Try, first he, he had beaten her, scolded her and when he felt it, this is not proper, this is not fair, then he some other used some other tactics and tried to coax, tried to try to um, make her understand that this is the norm of the time that she has to get married and she has to obey her parents. He begged her instead not to hurt him and he used the last weapon that the girls are very much um, kind and very much obedient to their parents that he begged her that please try to understand my position and you should not hurt me, not bring shame to me uh, by denying to get married. He would give her a chain of beads or a fine petticoat, he said, and there were tears in her in his eyes. And ultimately, he tried to please her. He tried to bribe her by giving her some ornaments, by giving her some precious dresses and showing uh, an emotional side of himself that he is very, uh, he wants her to study, but he is very helpless. He cannot help it. It is the norm of the society that at the precocious age or uh, before she uh, she uh, indulges in any other activity she should get married marriage is the last uh, thing he can think of uh, for her again coming back to the text how could she disobey him and virginia asks how can she being a virtuous girl she didn't disobey how could she disobey means she didn't disobey and she accepted her father's proposal. How could she break his heart? She couldn't break the heart of his father. So she obeyed and she uh, readily accepted the proposal. Uh, the force of her own gift alone drove her to it. She made up a small parcel of her belongings, let herself down by a rope one summer's night and took the road to the London. But the child in her, the love for reading, the love for studies, the love for books didn't coax her and ultimately she too, like her brother, packed her baggage and she ran away. She ran away to London. Wait. She was not 17. The birds that sang in the hedge were not more musical than she was. And she was a very tender girl. She hasn't even completed her 17th birthday. And um, she had a very beautiful voice, a very melodious voice. And she could sing like chirping birds in her garden. She had the quickest fancy, a gift like her brother's for the tune of the words and she has a fine voice quality and she used to sing better than her brother means Shakespeare, William Shakespeare. But see, not only the family, even the society was cruel to her, even the society was not ready to accept her. Coming back to the text, like him, she had a taste for the theatre and like her own brother, Judith 
had also a taste for the Shakespeare. She also wanted to act. She stood at the stage door. She wanted to act. She also came like her brother to the theater gate and she also wanted to work there. She also wanted to adopt acting as a profession. Men laughed in her face and see the cruelty of the society. That society which has accepted Shakespeare as, a, as an artist ridiculed her, lambasted her, make fun of her. The manager, a fat, loose, libbed man, guffawed. And the manager, the, the bulky man, put an evil eye over her and made fun of her. He bellowed something about poodles dancing and women acting no woman and said, Oh, you, a girl, a woman, would dance would act and then he laughed loudly no woman he said could possibly be an actress and he said no woman can act here ladies are not allowed to act in the theater in shakespearean period in, in elizabethan period even the role of the women were done by the uh, acted by the uh, male members even shakespeare used to act Shakespeare was very pretty, very good looking. He was a handsome man. So Shakespeare also uh, in his uh, plays, he also played the role of the uh, female characters. Viola and Olivia in um, Twelfth Night, he acted that. So that was the time when females were not allowed to act in theater. So they made fun of her and they pass lewd comments he hinted you can imagine what and he gave an uh, gave some clues to her how can you imagine how can you think of coming over here it is not possible she could get no training in her craft and uh, she was told that this is not a joke it's an skill uh, it's a skill it's an art and you are not trained for that women were not women were not supposed that they could act they could uh, they could act uh, as uh, efficiently and act realistically as male members of the crew or male members of the theater were performing. Could she even seek her dinner in a tavern or roam the streets at midnight? And she ultimately she was denied that opportunity and she roamed in the streets of the London here and there, went to a tavern, took her dinner somewhere. Yet her genius was for fiction and lusted to feed abundantly upon the lives of men and women and the study of their ways. And then what she wanted to do and then she thought that she would write fiction she would write novels and stories and in those novels and stories she would write she would write about the lives of men and women their psychology their predicament their agony their anguish their joy their sorrow their surprises their astonishment their achievements all that they will would write she thought of all that when she was roaming on the streets of the london at last for she was very young Oddly like Shakespeare, the poet in her face, with the same grey eyes and rounded brows, at the last Nick Green, the actor-manager, took pity on her. She found herself with child by that gentleman, and so, who shall measure the heat and violence of the poet's heart when caught and tangled in a woman's body? Oh my God. Um, Virginia says that when, even if you are talented, even if you are a poet, even if you are an artist, even if you are good in uh, all sorts of craftsmanship, skill, uh, you can write better plays, you can write better um, novels, but the predicament is, the dilemma is that you are enveloped in a beautiful woman's body so a woman's body is the hurdle and what happened to judith that that actor uh, who cast some mr nick green this name is also imaginary he was bewitched he was fascinated by her beauty he was fascinated by the color of her eyes 
the br rounded brows beautiful brows and pretty face and he fathered her with a child so uh, the question which uh, virginia asked is that when you are having a women's body you should not imagine that your talent would be accepted you will be given the chance the opportunity to seek your dreams fulfilled killed herself one winter's night and lies buried at some crossroads where the omnibuses now stop outside the elephant and the castle and ultimately what happened to the judith she could not bear her mental agony and one more fine day or one sad day she committed suicide and her body was found on the streets of london where the omnibuses the big buses the trams used to roam here and then there and near the elephant and the castle and elephant and the castle is a place in london like hazrat ganj in uh, lucknow so there her body was found means she the poor judith shakespeare committed suicide the last paragraph of the text that more or less is how the story run i think if a woman in shakespeare's day had had shakespeare's genius wolf comes to her point that this was an imaginary anecdote a story which i have cited in my long essay a room of one's own that if shakespeare had a sister and if she was as pretty as shakespeare was and also if she was as talented as shakespeare was her predicament or her end was as was the end of judith shakespeare created by virginia woolf and then she says but for my part i agree with the deceased bishop if such he was it is unthinkable that any woman in shakespeare's day should have had shakespeare's genius and this is unimaginable you see when she died the bishop who came for the last ritual he said that it is unimaginable nobody can think of than in that in shakespeare's time any woman had the same genius as shakespeare had there was no parallel there was no comparison no woman was having the same genius this was the elizabethan period this was the period in the 16th and 17th century in england when women were not given their equal share and you see uh, wolf has talked about two things first she says a room of one's own that uh, if women wants to have equality then they should have two things first a space of their own room means a space that they should have a place to sit alone sit there a room or a place or a space a space has many connotations room has also many connotations but here if i take it as a simply a room um, uh, where she can sit alone uh, can think brood over have a table a chair light books she can read and write there and the second thing she talks about not in this particular essay judith shakespeare but in her uh, essay a room of one's own which from where this particular extract has been taken that she that women should be economically independent when they are economically independent only then they will be in position to have a room of their own so judith shakespeare is an imaginary character it shows that how in that particular period elizabethan period mm -hmm. uh, women were treated but the truth is that what to talk of elizabethan period which the uh, the virginia wolf has cited even in wolf's period even in 20th century when wolf has written this p this essay she was not allowed to go to the school and attain the formal education and 
exactly like Judith Shakespeare, that was the fate of the Virginia Woolf after the death of her parents and after writing a lot of good novels, uh, Mrs. Dolloway and so many other good novels, which I'll be giving you in, in uh, my next lecture, uh, she has also committed suicide. So, thank you.